creating Macs for Live devices that interact with control surface scripts can be somewhat cumbersome and require quite a bit of trial and error. This is primarily due to lack of documentation and lack of standardization in terms of how control surface scripts are written. With the release of Live 9, that's changed a little bit. Newer control surface scripts can expose a standard interface that makes working with them from Macs for Live devices a bit easier. And this interface is covered in the LOM documentation. As you can see, this is specifically attributed to Push, but there's actually a variety of control surface scripts that use this interface. For example, the script for the Launchpad Pro, as well as third-party scripts such as our product, DDC. Arsenal-powered control surface scripts expose an extended version of this interface. And this is, of course, all documented. We provide documentation on all the functions and properties that are available, as well as other aspects of scripts, in particular their controls and their components. We also have a Max for Live repository that includes devices that demonstrate how this interface works. In case you haven't used it before, let me show you how the standard interface that's covered in the LOM documentation works. In short, this allows you to grab controls so you can use them within your Max for Live device, and then when you're done with them, you can release them back to the script. In this example, I'm using Arsenal NLC, which is the script for the Novation launch control. The interface allows you to get a list of the controls defined in a script. As you can see, controls are listed by their names, and these names are defined within the script. So for the launch control, we've got two sets of eight encoders, eight pads, and then four arrow buttons. We can now select a control and then grab it. Once it's grabbed, we can use it in our device. In this case, the value of the control is just being fed into a message box. When we're done with it, we can release it back to the script. And we can do this for individual controls or entire groups of controls. So here I'll grab all eight pads. And now in the message box, we have something slightly different. The first number is the value of the control. The second number is the index of the control within the group. So this is a useful interface, but it's really only ideal if you're creating devices that only work with one control surface script. If you want to create a device that works with multiple control surface scripts, this presents a bit of a problem. For example, all Arsenal-powered control surface scripts have a shift button, which modifies the functionality of other controls. However, not every controller has a physical shift button. Some do. For example, the APC-20 has a physical shift button, but the launch control doesn't. So using that interface that I just showed you and trying to grab a control name shift button is not reliable. It's not going to work for any given script. The extended interface that Arsenal Power Control Surface Scripts expose fixes that problem. This device demonstrates that. We simply have a property named shift button. This will get the idea of the script shift button regardless of what the button's actual name is. As another example of this interface, we might want to know how many sets of encoders a script has. We can do that with the num encoder sets property. Putting this all together, this allows for creating devices like this one. This device provides a floating window that shows the names and values of the parameters assigned to encoders. And since this uses a standardized interface, this will work with any Arsenal Power Control Surface script that has encoders, even scripts that haven't been developed yet. So in summary, when it comes to creating Max for Live devices that interact with control surface scripts, Arsenal makes that extremely easy.